My name is Tank. I'm Jay Valentine. Yeah, I feel like that. This is yeah. the R&B Money Podcast, yeah, take, the authority take it down, take it down on notch. all things R&B. All things. You know. So, soothing. Soothing. Yes. Um, yes. You know, as of recently, <laughs> you know, a lot of a lot of artists, a lot of creatives have um, adopted a vibe. A vibe. Uh, you know, now, yeah, they, now, they, yeah. now they have a vibe. Yeah, some of us are just the vibe. <laughs> you know, some of us are, some of us have been the, the vibe. Yeah. Um, for quite some time, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, very angelic on so many levels, all levels, um, v- visually, mm-hmm. artistically. Yes, yes. The gifts. I mean, I mean, yeah. they, they, they span countries. Yes, yes. And she is not from this place. The world, Craig. The world, Craig. Yeah. Uh, normally, I'm loud during this part, but you know, Jay, Jay just reminded me that this is, this is a vibe episode. Yeah. So yeah. we're gonna stay right in here. Make some noise for Guabalé. Guabalé. <laughs> Grab I love that whisper intro. Yeah, we got to set the mood. You have the first whisper intro. Eight candles yeah. in here. You have the only whisper intro. But it still had the energy behind it. No, yeah, it. yeah, because they know what it is when they see you. The, the camera, that's your camera. Give me <laughs> guapole. What does where does guapole mm. come from? Well, um, it's my grandmother's maiden name. Wow. And it's really pronounced Huapele. Say it again. Huapele. Huapele. You did excellent. But I would say since I was really little, it's been mispronounced in like a thousand different ways. It's a South African name. So Guapele is how I've been saying it since, you know. It's very bad. Elementary school. It's very bad too, though. Into it's like, guap. Guap. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Guap. I love that. Yeah, it's guap. Whole, I love that when that happened. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, guap money. had a good association. I was like, You know, because like, okay, what I'll she was it. saying is that the money come along <laughs> okay. with the essence. You know what I'm saying? Y'all don't really know. Y'all don't I really know. I love it. I love it. I'm like. Guapele. Yes. Yes. Guapele. And it means go forward. And um, I don't know. It took me a minute to to grow into it. And I feel like. That's kind of how my music has been. It's never really fit in exact like genre. It's just like growing into what I am and, you know, hoping well, that people get it. Well, people have pl- had to play catch up mm. on on what you were doing. Because for me, my first time hearing you, the only person that I could even talk about in that space or you know put you kind of next to was Sade yeah well I love hearing that Thank you know what I'm saying and you know what that I was like like her. those two energy like that's yeah that was it now everybody's you know now everybody's picking of picking vibe. the fruit of the vibe tree yeah. <laughs> which is great you know what I'm saying yeah, yeah, like yeah. We, we 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 want that we want it yeah. to grow and and become this thing you know what yeah. I'm saying but you know I just I remember you being yeah. there a long, yeah, long time Yeah, I feel ago. like when I started, I was like, I was really nervous about the industry because I was like, it's not straight up R&B. It's not straight. I don't even know if soul, like neo soul was like just about to be mm-hmm. a category when I was recording. By the time I put out music, neo soul was a, a genre. But it's like I loved jazz and blues and everything in between and I was like I'm just gonna write these songs and I'm gonna start performing and we'll figure it out you love you know? music yeah yeah, yeah. No, and, and I, I loved hip-hop but I wasn't a rapper and, so. and it's, a, it's a certain thing of obviously being from the home from being from the Bay Area yeah and just that melting pot of music for sure of so many things like you said there's there's jazz there's hip-hop there's church there's mm-hmm. you know what I mean there's Tony, Tony, Tony. Sheesh. You know Tony, what I mean? Tony, like, Tony, Tony, in Vogue. In Vogue. Like, like, they created. Sly and the Family Stone. It's just, when you start going, and, and, and all of those artists that you just named and groups are all different. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Nothing the same. Yeah. yeah. So imagine, you know, you grow up in that. And like you said, in South, Af- South African parent. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, you have a, a whole nother mindset of you know where your music can go and what it can be. Yeah. And just and I think 
as much as you know they always regionalize us you know that mm -hmm. with the you know with the whole Bay Area thing we still we don't have a we don't have a ceiling for ourselves though mm -hmm. like we just try music yeah we and it's such it. like an indie vibe yes. and mm -hmm. like because we're gonna put it out <laughs> it's, right? gonna, it's gonna come out either in a trunk <laughs> and that's how and that's how it started yeah. you know what i mean like pressing up a thousand cds and selling them at shows and out of the trunk and consignment at yeah. stores until it was like we don't just want two we want a box and it was like they're gonna buy a box of cds yeah. oh more stores <laughs> want them we need real distribution you know so you guys were going you and your team with skyblaze right yeah you guys were going from store to store yeah literally it was like amoeba, amoeba. yeah yeah, yeah. I yeah. remember Balance. Was Balance working at yes, Rasputin's? Yes, he was. It was Rasputin's that he, he was at. Was. So he was an artist, super talented guy too. Yeah, and he's now a rapper. He's, but now he's like a, a script writer. Oh wow! Okay. I want to oh, say wow. I, I, I want to say he is one of the writers on like Blind Spotting or something. Yeah, yeah, that like makes he's sense. he's doing his shit. But he used to actually be um, like the purchaser. Yep. At Rasputin's. Yep. And but he, he was an artist, but he and he was like fully tapped into yeah, everything and he that would was get going us to on. Do you live like, shows you're like, yo, you got to hit signings. balance, sell them, you know, some 100, 200 CDs over there, and they would move it yep. around their stores. So that was that was the cool thing about being from the Bay too, is that you could really there were there were places for you to be independent, for sure. But for I didn't sure. know y'all were. I, I for me, I always thought y'all had some form of distribution. So initially y'all didn't. It took a it took a minute and I think you know we presented in that way mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um from the beginning um and just wanted to have quality like no one needed to know how small it was starting. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. But the idea was like if we build it and I can build a fan base that there'll be like a demand. So if I do a major deal, I won't be shelved or I won't have to prove myself. It won't be about the marketing. It'll be like people are already requesting something. Mm -hmm. right. You know what I mean? Right, right. So it could be more empowering. You know, and there's people like um, from Digital Underground. We knew Shock G and DJ Fuse and... Legends. You know what I mean? That had been just doing things in their own way. And... um kind of mentoring from afar and just watching like how Too Short did it, how Lettucey did it, yeah. how Martin Luther did it, yeah. um, Hieroglyphics, how they did it. And they, we got distribution through them initially. Oh, they were doing you guys yeah. distribution. That's yeah, crazy. Yeah, through Red. That's yep. crazy. Yep. Because I was just doing these collaborations and it just naturally happened. I remember meeting with um, a guy. And uh, <laughs> and you, he had your CD on his desk. Mm. At this point, I had never heard of you yet. And I was kind of back and forth between LA and San Francisco. And this was yeah. before I started the whole City Boys music thing with Bailey. Mm. Um, and we were just kind of, you know, I was taking meetings. Yeah. And, you know, I had a, had a, had a meeting with, with the uh, Italian gentleman who, uh, who was doing some stuff in the Bay Area. Yeah. And... He was like, yeah, you know, this this new girl, it's Guapale, right? And I'm like, hey, who's Guapale, right? <laughs> right, right, right. I'm like, huh? the name sounds cool. <laughs> right, right. He's like, oh, he was talking about kind of, you know, the numbers that you were doing. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. You know, how you were just, he was like, you got to go see her live and you got to see her perform. And um, I don't remember the first place I saw you perform, but I was just like, oh, this is different. Yeah. Like, this is different. And I. With me being a Bay Area kid and me growing up yeah. there, it was still different to me. Mm. I was like, "Oh, this 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 feels like feels like Berkeley, Berkeley Bay Area, Berkeley." Yes, yeah, it yeah. felt like Berkeley. Yeah. So Berkeley for us Talk about is it. like yeah, free. It's 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 the free love. It's the yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Everybody, everybody, like flower hungry. children. Every, the yeah, flower yeah. children. Yes. Yeah. yeah. That's what yeah. it felt like, and if it, it made you smile. Yeah, mm. like when I heard your music, that's how it made me feel. Mm. And you know, I, you're from this same era too. We come from mob music, mm -hmm. very street. Mm -hmm. You know, what I mean the the old E40 days. Yeah, the the the, the trunk rattlers. The truck. You know and what I'm see, saying? I like, still like that in E40 my production. In the click. You know what I'm saying? Yes. Like not just yes. E40. There's an E40 in the click. Okay, yeah, yeah, I don't yeah. know. Most people don't, don't know, know about E40 yeah. in the click <laughs> is mob music. Yeah, you know what I mean. So growing up in that, 
RBL Posse and yeah. rapping Fote and yeah. Saint Quinn and you know what I'm saying and JT yeah. the Big Figure and all these things. And then when I heard your music, I was like, yo, this shit makes me smile. Mm. Like this feels really good. And that's and that's I what like I've that. always attached personally mm-hmm. to you and your music. Mm-hmm. I, whenever I see you, I'm always like, ah, that's quiet. It is that. <laughs> and it's that I mean? That's every that's time. That's great. Cause it's like for me, music that I relate to, like I want the bass lines and the drums to mm-hmm. feel like you could hear it. You know what I you mean? From not. down the yeah. street. Yeah. yeah, yeah you yeah. want it to. But what I want to say and the energy I want to put out is I want a positive impact on the world. So it's like there's, you know, certain stuff I'm not going to say mm-hmm. <clears throat> in my music, but I want the feeling to be a combination. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I feel like all those influences are in me. But I'm happy that it that it felt happy inside. And I grew up, I was born in Oakland, but I grew up in Berkeley and Oakland. So See, I didn't even know that. In there. Oh, wow. Yeah. And that's what it felt like to me. That's yeah. what it felt like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You go to Berkeley, you go get you, you know, a slice of Blondie's pizza. Yeah, get yeah. some You go, you know, you're going to see a little talk, college man. girl out there. You be yeah. like, ah, let her know where you're from. Yeah, it's just nice <laughs> out here. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, when did, cool. okay, when did you know that you were, was, was Guapale always going to be your stage name? And and when did you know that? Okay, was you like little Rashida at first? Or right, something? right. What, what, was, what was going on? At, what was the younger Juanpele <laughs> doing? Was was what was it? Was, 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 was you know what? what? Was, was I think it? when I was, <clears throat> I always like from a really young age. I'm gonna say like from eight years old. Mm-hmm. I felt like I wanted to be on the stage, and I would see like my parents friends like some of them were south african artists i would watch my parents would bring us to live shows you know what i mean it was all ages but we might be the only me and my sibling be the only kids in there you know what i mean like i don't know if we're supposed to be here but um i was just picking up on the vibe so i always felt like that's something i want to do but um i think i thought i was gonna have an easier name and I was like I don't know I was gonna maybe be like indigo or you know what I mean yeah, something yeah, yeah. something easy to say but that would be vibey and then I just started performing and you know I was doing like singing at rallies and protests and community events and um parties and it was just like this is me this is my name and it just I just, just kept stuck. moving yeah when did you feel like you like really had something? Because probably coming up, you know, with the family, going to the shows yeah. and all those things, it was probably something that was was normal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah we're just singing, having a good time. It is yeah, what it is. Yeah, my when brother did... was a DJ. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would I would just like sing over a you know hot instrumental. And... When did you realize it was something, or when did somebody tell you, no, no, this is you need to take this serious. This is real. I think inside of me. I felt it from when I was really young, but I didn't know if I would have any success, but I knew I had that vision for myself. Mm -hmm. And I think I was just doing it. Like it was, you know, I would go to like a lot of conferences and stuff like that. And I would just sing instead of talk because it was my comfort zone. And I liked the emotional connection and I liked seeing that it could, affect people and that they would feel something but I don't know if I believed I would have success like in doing my own music but in high school I was like I'm gonna take this seriously and like I went to Berkeley College of Music. It was like the only school I applied to. Really? You went to Berkeley? I, mm-hmm. Okay. I didn't know yeah. that either. For a, hot, for a hot minute. Oh, you didn't you finish? Know? You got a I didn't here. finish. I didn't finish. But I met some of the earliest collaborations. Like I went to school with Jeff Basker, who's like an amazing producer mm-hmm. and songwriter. We did um, the first songs on my first album for school projects. Oh, I was wow. like, you know what I mean? We only had to write like 16 That's bars, crazy. but I was yeah. like, I want to write a song. I'm here to write a song. So I'm about to like find these talented people at the school and be mm-hmm. like, will you sit down with me? Cause I couldn't play anything, but I was like, I could hum a little idea and I had a little idea and I was like, let's, I don't want to do this just for life. the teachers. Yeah. And yeah. it's like, and I ended up using that later. Um, 
I think Shaka Ramsey, I worked with there, Adam Dyke, a, a bunch of really dope musicians. Mm-hmm. Um, I forgot the beginning of the question because <laughs> I started going off on no, the No, just a, about you, you know, really seeing if this was a real thing for you. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, would it, or when you start feeling that for yourself. Yeah. I, I mean, I think that, um, Doubt kind of creeps in, in and out. Um, But I was going to make the steps, I feel like, from early on. And when I was starting to write music, like I was saying, I didn't know if there was a place for me, but I was just going to do it anyways, Mm -hmm. you know? And I just feel like I've always tried to have my own measures of success because our else is just like so intimidating. It's like almost anything can feel like not enough. Mm-hmm. Have you ever done anything else? Besides independent, you mean? No, I'm talking about like outside oh, of music. Like, have yeah, you yeah, ever, yeah. Like, like I've worked with kids. I used to work with kids a lot. Um, when I was younger, I considered being like a child care provider, teacher. Yeah. Um, you could do that. I love yeah, I cooking. That. I, can see that. I, can see that. I used to. Like, yeah, you want me to be my new teacher? <laughs> Tell yeah. me. I was camp counselor. Dad, you trying to come up to the school all the time. I'm just checking on my kid, make sure he's doing the right thing. How you doing today? Shaking her hand. Yeah, shaking her hand. I bought a. Uh, also brought these flowers. I don't, uh, you know, I don't, I don't want this to come off weird. As, a, as a, or, something organic. Yeah, some organic. <laughs> you gotta bring as, something organic. As a gesture for just, you know, teaching my kid the right way. Uh, okay. You know, just really pouring into him uh, the way we pour into each other. I don't, I don't know. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> no, I love that, and I was like, it's just that's tiring work. Oh, no. Like teachers need to get paid more money. I was like, absolutely. Oh, for sure. I am not going to be able to multitask. Working with kids and yeah. doing music, kids, I, where you I, was, I was doing kids, where you retail for a little bit. I was like working in restaurants, and honestly, I love all those things. Um, but I think I would be sad if I wasn't also doing music. Yeah, your music you know? is the music is your yeah, calling. That's your purpose. Yeah, and yeah. so all those little jobs, you know, when I was younger, it was just like when I can afford to quit. I will, and Mm -hmm. I'm just, like, thankful that I've had now, like, a long career in music. It's kind of crazy, like. When were you able to quit? When was that? Um, Or what was that moment? Somebody said quit. I got Somebody said quit. You know what happened? (laughs) You know what happened? I was, like, I was working retail, and I think I was, like, nannying, and it was, I was getting I was starting to do like background stuff I was performing with Spearhead and it was just like the scheduling was getting in the way yeah and then like for shows the scheduling was just getting in the way so I was like I can't prioritize this over this so Mm. it just was kind of natural as it when, taking when, this apron off, no, yeah, no, I mean you just (laughs) you took you took the steps to where like I mean Jake me and Jay talk about this all the time like you have to Make sure you can take care of yourself yeah. Yeah. until it can take care of you. No, that's real. Yeah. That's real. And I think sometimes people don't understand that concept. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Some people you know just I mean? jump in the ocean. Yeah. It's like you it's can, tough. like a starving artist, like you don't really have to be starving though. Like you, don't you have can to be. make sure you provide <laughs> right. for yourself. Right. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. Do your art until it takes over and mm-hmm. then quit whatever else you were doing. You know what I mean? Wow. Yeah, we we we've kind of, we're, we've kind of become advocates for that, right? Yeah. Of you know, taking care of yourself. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because you put yourself in a position where someone's taking care of you. Now it's more advantageous for them. It might not, and you it know might what I mean? Like for free, everything is on know? everything yeah. is on their side. It, yeah. It not even might not be for free. Yeah. It, it ain't, ain't for free. free. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That shit adds up. But it up. seems like it is. It's, I think to some people, and thank God because they're promoting it that way. Yeah, and like, thank God I was able to work like that. My family was like, "Let's do this." Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because shout out to your brother too. That's my guy. Thank yeah. you. Shout out to Namani and Theo. But I think. It can be confusing yeah. when people are coming up because it takes putting in a lot of work 
until you start making cool money. Some people blow up overnight, but right. sometimes overnight is 10 years, you know? For sure. Absolutely. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. Absolutely. Multiple deals or multiple, yep. I thought I had a deal or I don't want to take a deal. Can you kind of give us, because your, your career has been based around your independence as well. Like you've yeah. done very well in the independent space. Like people look at you, they don't just look at you as an independent artist, so they just look at you as a as a major artist. Yeah, they have no it's idea. never just yeah. like, oh yeah, yeah no, what well, she's doing. No. So you guys were able to build this thing up. Like, can you give us some of the, you know, like the background in that? And just <clears throat> spending your own money. Yeah. You know, booking your own studios. Yeah. You know, building and, our own and studios. Being, building it You own, know what I mean? Like with an advance. It's like we could have just gone to like the dopest, most expensive studios and been like, yeah, book it out for this month. Yeah, mm -hmm. book it out for next month. Yeah. But for me, I was always like, cha-ching, 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 cha-ching. Like that's more you debt for numbers. me. Yeah. You know what I mean? More recouping. What does this mean, recoup? And so we were like, let's take some of that money, build our own studio out, and then I can go as much as I want. I'm not on the clock. Like I don't. I don't need that pressure. Yeah. And um, I love the idea of ownership. I like feeling empowered. I don't, you know, I I like feeling like my own boss. So it's kind of like however that can work. Um, so were you doing your own hair and makeup? <laughs> look, I'm still doing my, I'm not doing my own hair. But I'm still doing my own makeup. Except for like, look, for, you know, photo shoots and certain things. Mm -hmm. Thank God. You know, I know all these great people that can work with me. But I think because of how I started, I was always aware of like, there's a price to all of these things. Mm -hmm. And um, some of it is for sure worth paying for. But... I know that on the back end, I'm going to have to give it back. So, like, right. if this is something I can do, you know what I mean? I'm just doing it myself. I'm yeah. going to do it myself. Yeah. Or, you know, work with, you know, work with a team for sure. But I think that I've never kind of had the full smoke and mirrors experience because it's like we were our own street team starting. You know yeah. what I'm saying? It's yeah. like it's not all magic it's like i know <clears throat> you know what what it takes to yeah you know what you got to put into it yeah. it's something that you said that's very important and, and something that i think us all being in the music business for as many years as we have we don't really look at it as full information but recoupment yeah yeah if you're a new artist most people don't understand what that is they don't even understand that an advance has to be paid back yeah they don't understand that that's debt that you incur from day one. Yeah. Like, re I think that, like, for me, like, reading contracts is so mm -hmm. important. And having trustworthy people around you that will help you break down what yes. stuff means. Because yeah. it's it's not easy to understand. Mm -hmm. And it's like, they can be so long. But... For no reason. Yeah. But yeah. you're like, no <laughs> why am I still not making a money off of this? Oh, because uh, all this on stuff page 57 has to get recouped in paragraph before seven. I make it back, yeah. you know? And so I think I had a lot of fear coming into the industry. So um, I don't know. I also had my guards up in certain ways, but I also just had good people around me that was like, okay, how can we avoid this? And my lawyer was like, how can we get in and out of a situation instead of just stuck in one or, you know? Yeah. How can yeah. I get released mm -hmm. if it's not going to work be. for me gotcha. right. before yeah, yeah. the next album? Because yeah. it's like the major's choice to be like, you know, oh, hold. didn't I know player options? Yeah. So no. it's like, no how, <laughs> where where is the loophole that if this is not mutually really going well, at, eventually reasonably, right. I can get myself out of this. Yeah. And um, I feel like that's saved me. But yeah. Read the fine print and just know like Oof. some of the wonderful, glamorous things are like, you know, they're nice to have, but they're not just gifts. Right. Most Sometimes of the time. Sometimes they become pitfalls. Yeah. Or it's like, you're going to pay for it at the end of the day, but it yeah. might be worth it. But just know. Yeah. Yeah. It's on your tab. Jet fuel is expensive. 
Yeah. Okay. <laughs> the artist You're doing all this the, for the me. The artist no, shall remain you're nameless. Are pay, but you're paying for this. It's like, you sure you want to take a jet? A jet? <laughs> a J-E-T? Man. <laughs> yeah, the label going to pay for it. Oh, they oh, are. Oh, they are. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. You ain't going to. You know you could have been in, on a plane. You Delta One is Delta One. It's you like so that? nice. <laughs> it's so sexy. Because you some guys good food have done stuff both ways in time in terms of like deals and right? yeah, we've we've done all of it. Major label stuff. Yeah. We've done yeah. indie stuff. Yeah. You know, we've we've been in the music business. Yeah, yeah. you know, and in, in all aspects of it. If it's you know licensing something or if it's getting some distribution for something if Mm -hmm. it's you know a one-off yeah yeah Um, and figured out how to yeah navigate and it it works every way Mm -hmm. it just depends on how much you want out of it Mm -hmm. and what you want out of it yeah Yeah. you know because everybody in this industry is not going to get fame and money you can get money yeah you may not get the fame yeah but one thing you can do in music if you stay to it and you read the fine print and you stay hustling, you'll make some money at this thing. Yeah. yeah. You may never become famous though. Yeah. True. I mean, there's a lot of huge writers. I mean, you guys do both of mm-hmm. it. So you see like, you know, live live shows is kind of like the, you know, day-to-day job. Mm-hmm. But I like, I love writing songs and I love getting to see royalty checks and that really and it can be separate jobs you know what i mean but it's like great you know that's a saving grace it is a saving grace you know what i mean mailbox money i tell i I tell my daughter (laughs) and for you you, it's like you've had hella number ones yeah i tell my daughter this all the time i say listen you know because as we're you know kind of working on her doing her music and all of these things and you know i'm like listen we're gonna work with all these cool people and that's fine. I was like, but I, I'm, I'm, I'm putting you in the room with these people so that you can learn. Mm-hmm. And, and you learning is going to ultimately be you just depending on you. Mm. I was like, because in two part, the first part is when you write it and you sing it. Who Lord. Yeah. <laughs> who yeah. Lord. Who Lord. It's a, a different kind of bag. You understand yeah. what I'm saying? But the second part is anytime somebody wants you to deliver mm. then you can always count on you you don't have to worry about anybody else when they say well we need a new such and such when you gonna do you know what i'll be right back and you yeah. go in there and you whip that thing up yourself see it, and you're a musician too so it's like that's something i admire mm-hmm. um so it's like if you want, you could just go perform just you and piano. Yeah. You know what I mean? That That's cool. even more yeah. empowering. Like but when you're writing goes, a song. He I'm goes like to the Beyonce still... concert and loses his mind, though. <laughs> He's like, Jay, we need we wind. We need lights. <laughs> I need wind. I'm like, you don't even have a perm. I, I, I will get need, one. What do, you need, what do you need wind for, bro? I will bro? get a perm. <laughs> Baby oil. I need a I, We go have the oil is always on deck. Oh. Uh, I need glitter suits. <laughs> no, I man. Need, well, the only, and the only reason, man, let's get into it. And the only reason I do that is because. Because you can. Uh, well, that, and, and it's like R&B is always like, well, you can just do that and, right. and it'll work. Right. Mm. All right. But it's like. Artists like Beyonce, they push the limits. They push the yeah, limit yeah, yeah, in, yeah. in, in terms of yeah, what their greatness it is, should be yeah. capable oh, of. Goodness. You know what I'm saying? And so I'm like, yeah, I could just I could sit at the piano and just and 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 do that and you know and and but but what if what if there were explosions? Like what if You know what I feel you though, what, because what? we want it all. Like what? Yeah, not? no. We want it all. I'm just saying that's such a great tool. Yeah. That's the, something like if I was code. he got the cheat code. Yeah. If I was doing it over I would have more discipline learning an instrument. Mm. You know, it's like something that I've been like, this year I'm going to sit down just so I can play chords like when I'm trying to make up songs. I can see you playing Instead of like I'm humming like 
Mm-hmm. Can you Play tell this. what I'm humming on this bass line? I have a right bass line there. in my head. You know what I mean? Can you tell what this is? I can see you playing guitar, though. Listen, AI about to turn it listen, all around man, for us. Man, man what? AI, AI, tell me what I'm thinking in my head. Yeah. <laughs> Put Play some it. chords to this. You can literally do right. that now. You can already do that. Yeah, you can sing into it and it'll put chords to it. It'll put harmony to it, everything. Wow. Oh, scary. I'm not ready. I'm ready to tell them to play it on the pigs. (laughs) Play it on the (laughs) pigs. On the pigs, baby. (laughs) Play my AI on the (laughs) pigs. Well, listen, once the hologram gets gets cost effective, it's a wrap. Oh, man. It's a wrap. People are going to be doing those concerts in front of a green scheme in in their their garage. That's crazy. In front of thousands of people in a live audience. Yeah. There could, has been a little bit of that already. Yeah, but I mean, but it's, you know, it's such an expensive thing at this point, but now mm. they're making it, you know, they're making it more, more solid. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? To where like it really looks like those yeah. people are there. That's crazy. See, but I'll say because I mean, I did have to do performances in my living room in the pandemic. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Oh, did you do them? Yes, I did. How did you, I was how'd you like, like it? Cuz he didn't like uh, it. Yes, he thank like you. I will like do it. that. Well, that's the thing. You can't replace the energy of an no, audience. Absolutely. It's God, like singing yeah. to the camera and just imagining. That's it's, it's very it's different. Like I was thankful tape for yeah, it. Like audition tape. Yeah, for sure. You like did, I was thankful for I did a, enough of them. I didn't do a lot of them. Yeah, yeah. I did enough of yeah, them. Yeah, we got, you know we got, what I'm saying? To get me pay. through that yeah. time. But yeah. it what I I didn't really miss the traveling and like the sound check you know all that type of stuff but like to see people's faces and people singing along with mm-hmm, you yeah. and feel like you're having some kind of effect i missed that absolutely you know it's just like absolutely. this this couldn't be long lasting it had to be a, a yeah. temporary thing so it's like i could see how it would look beautiful you know what what they're going to be able to do but it's like still yeah, because like, you, you, you tour the you tour the world too. Like you go everywhere, you see people everywhere. So Kinda. it's like just looking into a camera had to just be for you. Like, eh. yeah, Oops. it's like it's got to be a way shorter show. You did just one, right? Is it one or two? One. one. I did one with my band though. Yeah. So that was that worked. You know what I'm saying? And Keith sweating it was all in the kitchen, <laughs> cooking. <laughs> so for real? It was, yeah. It's the only way yeah. I could get him to do it because it was Keith Sweat too. Yeah. Sweat Are called me. Are you kidding yeah, 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 yeah. Like Sweat had his house set up as like a a live, you know, a live performance. One of his homes. One of one of his many oh homes. One of his many homes. Many homes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, and like he had like you sleep there. He had you rehearsed there. The whole thing. Get, the cameras all your, set up. Get your ass on that camera, baby. Shut me. Get your ass on that camera, baby. Same same song. Same Stop song, fucking baby. around in here, baby. Come on, baby. You know what I need you to do, baby. You had, um, you had the sweat hotel, baby. You had the sweat oh. hotel, baby. And then the whole basement is game rooms I'm just thinking New that. Jack like, City. Oh, yeah. Oh, no, You're taking me all the way back. He is, no, he's, yeah. He is New Jack City in real life. Like, he no, no, has not changed. Sweat is Nino Brown before he snitched. Period. <laughs> he he, oh is, he is the real Nino. He's the real Nino. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But do you remember he performed in that movie? Absolutely. Yes. Yes. He oh. was at the wedding. Yeah. Yes. It's just Keith Sweat. The, all, the, the sweat. All day. He's probably he's at, always all. He's at the wedding singing. Yeah. There you go telling me no again. Yeah. Yes. That was the song. He was supposed at, to sing another song. At though. the wedding? <laughs> yeah. He's supposed to sing another. I can't remember the story. He's supposed to sing another he song. He's going to tell us the story when yeah. he come on here. Say there you go telling me no again. I At the wedding. That is way too aggressive. It's not a wedding song. <laughs> See, and I didn't I didn't even connect that. <laughs> Give me the cheese. That was just like the beat. <laughs> <laughs> or else. Oh, no. Need them cheeks. No, no, get out of there. Get you out know here. what tonight <laughs> is. Oh my goodness. The deflowering. <laughs> Give me that. But see, that was all those lyrics, and we didn't even, you know what I mean? I was like singing the, like, guy. We didn't didn't even say it, him. If we didn't think about it, it was was Keith Sweat, it was enough. Whatever he said was good. Yeah. We didn't care. Yeah. Yeah. I don't need Sage. I'm in a good place. (laughs) I'm in a good place. (laughs) All right. So we've been jumping, but give us when that record first hits. Mm. And when I say that record, Hmm. Closer. Wow. The the song that you close your eyes to yeah. and imagine that everything is gonna be all right. To this mm. day. I've I've been in there. I, to this day. I remember after me and Guap met and got cool, she had invited me to a show. Whoop. And Whoop. 
what, what was the? It was at um. It's like it's a it's a legendary venue in LA too. Um, <clears throat> it's like off of Santa Monica. Not that. Not the El Rey. Not the El Rey. Santa Monica. It's it's next to that uh, legendary steakhouse, Dan Tony's. Troubadour. The Troubadour. Troubadour. Mm. I'm upstairs. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. I'm upstairs at the Troubadour. Troubadour. Yeah. She comes on stage. She mm-hmm. floats on stage. She does. Let's float. just put that there. She be floating. She floats onto the she stage. Be mm-hmm. Everyone. Mm-hmm. Closes their eyes and looks up. Yeah, I don't, I don't know how that really makes sense. I like that. Yeah. Your eyes and look yeah. up. Yeah. Like if you're gonna look up, just have well, your when eyes you open. close your eyes, you do do this. You do, you do wander off into the, the the whole building. The, yeah, and I was like, oh, this is amazing. Yeah, yeah. Am I high? <laughs> yeah, you are. I don't do drugs. I'm like, I don't do drugs. I'm not high. But I feel high. Right. Right. <laughs> oh, wow. Amazing feeling. Amazing feeling. So Thank please you. tell us when that record first. Cracked, or what was the process in what, cracking yeah, yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. Because like, are y'all literally taking this record? Yeah, store to store. Yeah, you know what? I I was working with Amp Live from okay. Zion I uh-huh. um, and Mike Tiger from the Bay Area, and um, I said that was just like the intro to the album to my EP. Oh, that was your interlude. It was the yeah, it was the intro. You know, Tank's been having vibe. this whole interlude thing. He's been he's. You never know because those interludes. Been, I've been it's saying like, I have the greatest a intros and interludes of all time. Yeah. Closer. I didn't know that was the closest inter- interlude. I didn't know. <laughs> yeah, <'cause> it's like <laughs> it's not the pressure of a song. I got smoke. You know. <laughs> I got a it's smoky a, one here. <laughs> I can't wait to hear your interludes. Oh, you got that's an interlude. So that's where it started. It was, intro? it was like I was pretty much done with the project, but this is like an EP. This mm-hmm. is like no distribution. This is just like these are the songs that okay. represent me, and I'm going to put them out into the world. And I have been working with Amp Live with for a Zion Eye project, and um. He was like, I think you're going to like this track. Like, this is a cool vibe. And as soon as I heard it, I just kind of heard a little something. Like, it's one of the only songs that it just felt like it was in the air. And I was like, I should go um, to his studio and just put down a basic idea. And then I can come back and, like, flesh it out. Because Mm -hmm. I'm, like, the queen of overthinking things. You know what I mean? Yes. And um, so it's one of the few songs that I've ever done that I just kind of was like, just record it like without me thinking it too much. It was just kind of like this higher, like I know sometimes I feel like this, but it's just kind of this in between space of like, I know I'm on my way. I'm not there yet. This is humbling. This is frustrating. It's not as good as I want it to be. Like, but I know that something is happening. And um, it just kind of captured that moment. And it was just kind of a freestyle. And I just did it a couple times. And um and we, it's like the least takes I've ever done. And I'll do takes on takes on takes. Lord, you're a you taker. Yes. You're a taker. <laughs> yes. And they're like, um, okay, stop. <laughs> We're going to edit we this got now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, 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 no. You're good. And I'm like, just one more, one more. <laughs> just one more. And so it was not that because it was just a feeling. And then we were like, we'll just start the project out this way because it's a vibe and then it was on the b side of childhood drama was like the first single that we gave to kmeo and it was like my so motion the, the single it was, was called the, childhood drama. childhood drama yeah, yeah you weren't trying to get no record you were trying to get no radio play yeah no i, you weren't, you weren't trying I to get was no radio just, play. i don't know what i was thinking <laughs> i don't know what i but it was over that dolly my baby oh yeah 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 beat right and i got you know we were into like the dance hall and all that and so Closer was on the other side, just like to get a taste mm-hmm. of the album. And that song, I don't know, people were just gravitating towards it more. And when we were giving people the project, they were just like this, like, I really feel that. And then it ended up getting played on the radio. So was there, was there a DJ that identified the record early? 
I would say my emotion. My emotion. My emotion was on it. Or that was like shout out to my emotion. Two thousand, maybe. Yeah. You know what wow. I mean? Um, and it ended up getting on radio like different cities, different years. Oh, like huh. talk about a slow burn and trust the process. But that's also like literally like two thousand being independent. It's not like you had a radio run. It's not like you had a you know not radio really. team. Or, at that or point. not at that point. Yeah. Not yeah. at that point. And said, it would be like they do like the seven at seven. You said between 2000 and 2004? I'm not playing. And because I then did a deal with Sony or Skyblaze did a deal with Sony. Okay. And so then we put it, they wanted to put the song on the album again. And I was like, oh, that song is old, blah, blah, blah. Right. But I, I just was like, okay, if this is like the only thing that I'm leaning on, just put it on there. And mm-hmm. thank God, because some people would never hear my first album and, you know, the second album. Because the first album was, it was even support. closer. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. And, um, and so some people are like, I've been rocking with you since the beginning, 2005, when you first put out that song. And I'm like, uh, he I really put it out. You know what <laughs> yeah. I mean? But I'll take yeah. it and I love it and I appreciate it. And then people have like, you know, remixed it. And so people come to it however they do. But it really was like, I don't know, a phenomenon that I didn't imagine. And right. it's still going. Like it's like that record is still new to certain people. Yeah. Like, yeah. And it's it's one of those records. It just it doesn't get old. It doesn't get old. Mm. It's like the Thank Meek you. Mill intro. Yeah, <laughs> it's like, it's no, no like, shit. The army version of the Meek yeah. Mill intro. And, and, and it's, like and going it's a nowhere. great representation of when someone wants to play a Bay Area R and B record. Mm. They, you're the first choice. That is the first choice for the Bay Area R and B record. You're going to play closer. I never even sure. associated that with like Thank the. You. I mean, now that we're having this conversation yeah. and feeling the the yeah. vibes from it. Yeah. But, yeah. You know, from somebody who was in D.C. and then. Yeah, yeah. Got hit yeah, and came DC here. DC was a big you know. supporter. Too. Oh, absolutely! No, you're you're tailor made. I love DC. <laughs> DC. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you're tailor made for DC. And they supported so much live music. Like yeah. I feel like we had a Let lot of like also. live like uh, blues alley and those type of yeah. things where people could come and those yeah. those 300, 300 people to one like yeah. it was like you could they the would be Birchmere. the Birchmere is, is, they, is, food right? is they food is fire too what I ain't gonna front the food is fire Birchmere, Birchmere look <laughs> yeah. I, where, where the Birchmere at yeah. Oh, yeah. I used to have a time at the Birchmere yeah man you took me back yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. that's a cool spot yeah cool cause spot. it's fun and live and I always worked with live musicians since mm-hmm. the beginning and really so you like, always had a band from the t- from the, from well, the start in the very, very start, like before my album came out, it would just be like me and DJs and I'm just performing okay. over instrumentals. Okay. You know what I mean? I do like my own version over, you know, Noriega, over... Very hip hop records. Yes. <laughs> Maybe dance hall, but mostly hip hop records. And so it could be like, it'll just fit in the party. Like, get on. You want to get on right now? Yep. And then um, when I started writing music... It was super lot. Some of it was like straight up live and some of it was over tracks. But I wanted to have, you know, probably from going to Berkeley Mm -hmm. in Boston, I really wanted to have live musicians. musicians, And thankfully, like I got to work with some really dope people. And I also was someone that like, even though I love dancing, I don't know. My music isn't really like the dance you know like something you would dance to Mm -hmm. necessarily so i was like that part of the show you know what i mean and i didn't have a fan and and all of that so it's kind of like i need something dynamic yeah um so yeah and then sometimes it'll be like dj and a live musician or whatever but so you can't i like both i can dance for you know for fun (laughs) because <laughs> you know he, he wants to dance because I can dance because I can dance <laughs> and you know we should be able to dance if yeah. we feel like it yeah for sure I'll just be, do, I'll, I'll be a vibe if you want to do some vibey <laughs> dance to closer I would see but that. it's like the thing is like all my what I gravitate to sing to it's like it's gonna be 
slow. Slower. It's yeah, going to be yeah, backy. No, but I'm, it's yeah. not going to yeah. be the same stuff that I'm like driving around dancing yeah. to. You no, know what I'm, I mean? No, it's but just, I'm saying I would respect it. I yeah. wouldn't mind. If, if I broke were. into a little <laughs> something. I, I wouldn't. It wouldn't bother. Eyes me. closed. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like when, yeah. I'm he like, wouldn't be mad. Getting off his damn dance. Mm. Oh, see, I knew that shit was coming. Off mm. of that, <laughs> as an indie artist, yeah. When closer breaks for you, what is the process of now these labels coming? Yeah. Did y'all have a full like bidding war going, or were you guys just on some? You know what? We're not taking none of these meetings. We're not. I doing was taking that shit. all the meetings. You took all the meetings too. Yeah. Yes. What they saying? <laughs> what they, the, I'm taking what they all saying. the meetings because it's like the more you take, mm -hmm. the better mm -hmm. the option of like, well, this person is offering this. So yeah, what are you yeah. offering? I'll, I, yep, I'll come to New York and have a meeting. Yep, L.A. Like, I was down to meet with everybody because <clears throat> I just wanted the best option i wanted to feel at home i wanted to feel like i wouldn't have to compromise um i wanted to feel like i don't know like they believe in me and they trust what i'm doing and really it's just like faith and luck you know you so never what made really you, know what made but... you decide on going to sony what's the bag or was it the no i i don't I'm going to be honest with you. I don't know exactly. Like the people that I was meeting with were nice. What was it over some of the other labels? I'm not exactly sure, to be honest. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I think they were still going to like let us do our own thing. You had your freedom still. Yeah. yeah. And that's a that's a big part when somebody makes that investment in you, you lose freedom. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You do lose freedom. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because now you playing with somebody else's money. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I get that. And were you guys able to have that freedom once the project came out? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Because like I said, we were like, okay, let's get all this equipment. You know what I mean? Like for our studio and build uh headquarters and like and continue to build it out and I had a and R that I feel like was so um open he wasn't controlling um and I was willing to put I had the drive you know what I mean so it wasn't mm -hmm. like someone had to be like come on mm -hmm. you know what I mean get in there so it was just like our, we're just gonna keep doing things as we have been you yeah. know but like with some more support so that process for you if you could go back on it would you go and do a major deal again or like looking at it because you know like we've talked about it you've been an independent artist you've done a major deal yeah when you look at the you know the landscape and if there's a you know a young artist watching this yeah. And and how you've gone about it. What were the the positives and the negatives in that space? Um I don't feel like looking back, I don't have much regret. I think that I would still do it for the most part the same because there was more exposure. You yeah. know, and just like a way bigger team, you know, working with a major. Um, it wasn't a trade in, it was kind of a partnership. So it was different for me than maybe it would be for an artist singly going in. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, and, so that, I and I think that like partnership was, kind of, was based on you already have having him, success, having success. Yeah. And, already and like, working and there was still Skyblaze. Mm -hmm, so. Mm -hmm there was still like a unit around me mm -hmm. that was helping regardless, yeah. you know, of Sony. But of course we didn't have the money that Sony had, you know, like mm -hmm. there was some radio support and some mm -hmm. tour support and, and all of those things that just seemed natural that when I went back to being independent, I was like, Oh, okay. You know what I mean? It can be, it <laughs> yes. can be humbling yes. sometimes, yeah. you know, not having all of those 
extra things, you know, and that those extra Radio resources. Radio <laughs> Man, I'm saying, because yeah. it's just like things just happen and it's just like, oh, this is just how it is. Yeah, like yeah. when your song starts getting played more, you just have all these things, you know. You think it's just the record. Right. Yeah. It's not and just there's the like Shout doors out to the that radio open, department. you know what yeah. I mean? Like people are opening those doors, yeah. you know. So I recognize all of that. So I think I wouldn't do that different. I think. If anything, like in my career that I regret is like not collaborating more, like that kind of stuff used to just make me nervous. Mm. And so um, people that you might have, uh, yeah, you might, you might there's still to so this day many, a, like, you might producer. owe somebody a feature. She was just nervous, guys. She didn't, <laughs> honestly, and I think it probably comes off like I don't know how it comes off. But I know that, like, I've gotten some amazing tracks from people that I was fans of, like, mm -hmm. big producers that I was fans of. But I just, it was hard to rise to the occasion sometimes, you know, mm -hmm. or different artists that I could have worked with that I was just like, I just don't feel like I have the right thing for this. And I think now, you know, the more music I do, I'm like, oh, I can song write with people. Mm -hmm. I don't have to write every single line if it's like... I don't have to leave a song unfinished because there's like a couple things I'm not satisfied with. Like right. open it up, find out who you can work with, see yeah. like what's cool because it can be really uncomfortable and it can be really vulnerable. But now I see like it's worth it for the times that like things have clicked Yeah, mm -hmm. and I'm able to like complete some things. I'm like, Maybe I was holding on a little too tight. Yeah. So in the in that space, because I, I I once went through a thing where I was like, my music is just for me, and, mm -hmm. and it's only for me. I was like on some Devante, you know what I'm saying, for him damn self records. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like I was really on that. Yeah. Um, but I was kind of like following his pattern. It wasn't me. I was just like, yes, yeah, I Devante did. That's how I'm gonna do. You know, I'm trying to create this exclusive. It was on person. I mean, on purpose. Yeah, I was like trying to be this exclusive. My music is. Only I can deliver this. You know what I'm saying? Like mm. I was in that space for a moment. You yeah. know what I'm saying? And then, and then I needed some money, so <clears throat> that changed everything. <laughs> um, but were you? Were you? Was it a protective thing for you, or was it a fear thing, or was it a combination of both? Maybe both. Yeah, because it wasn't on purpose. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? I think I always wanted to be authentic. You know what I mean? And I didn't want to be like all. Uh, packaged together and I just I had this thing about like I just want to be real and but I in some ways like it wasn't that I was trying to limit myself or that I was I don't know I mean part of it was just like nervousness mm -hmm. you know what I mean and like it feels vulnerable to get in a studio with different people and not know if it's going to be uncomfortable, mm. you know, or not know. I don't know. What's the worst that you can never, happen? You if you have protective around. people around you, because I will say as a female artist. It's like, way different. Oh, way it's different. Completely different. Yeah. Thank God. Yeah. I have always had good people around me. And a lot. it's such a male dominated industry. Mm -hmm. Like I've had a lot of family and a lot of guys around me that have looked out for me because mm -hmm. people have come at me different than they come at some other up and coming, oh, for sure. you know, female artists, like there's some nightmare stories out there. So there's that, yeah. you mm -hmm. know what I mean? Not quite like, what's your intention? But there's also just like, if you get in the studio and it's just like, Ugh, this is vulnerable and uncomfortable. And like, how do I, how do I get out of this? Out of, you know what I mean? Was <laughs> I, I avoiding that? I don't really like, like your tracks, man. I don't happen? like you. I don't like your tune. Like, just yeah. try, you yeah. know? And I think now what I've learned is, like, be more disciplined, go to the studio, be open to working with more people, and just see what happens. Mm -hmm. And then take it or leave it. Because you never know, like, when the spark is going to happen or when the magic is going to happen. That also comes with experience. Yeah. yeah. And everybody experiences it different. Yeah. You know, everybody, everyone's time. 
yeah comes at whatever totally. whatever it does and for you i don't think your music would have sounded the same if you would have made the rounds of you know the sessions. hottest producer oh yeah we're gonna send like, her you know, in with such and such that's mm-hmm. true because i was always that was always hard for me and i think I was doing what was authentic for me, but it was also like now I just have more a sense of myself completely just because mm-hmm. I'm more grown. So it's just things are a little more obvious to me right. when I'm stepping into a situation. I'm not like as worried you're going to throw off my whole vibe because I just understand myself better now right? because I'm grown now, mm-hmm. you know, so... I think it's a little, there's less fear, if that makes sense. It makes perfect sense. Yeah. Fear is very real in this thing. It is. And very and it's real. like environments are, are a thing too. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Like you yeah. want to be, you want to be comfortable. Like don't yeah. nobody want to be uncomfortable making no music. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You walk into certain <laughs> sessions and be like, I don't. People think it's wow, easy, it's like but nine, it can be It's like it can nine be strippers here. I don't. Okay, I'm, so I'm okay, but I, that's what I, like. I just don't know your how much. Your experience is different. I don't know how much work we're gonna get. No, I know what your experience is like. Listen, these are the lyrics, but I also bought us two plates of food um, and some wine. If you would. <laughs> Look, before, wine's the classy before, version. Before we start wine's the like session, my, uh, before we start the session, I got this Mad Dog 2020 that I was hoping we could partake in. Really get the vibes going. Is it cool if I roll this up? Really? <laughs> it's cool. Yeah, yeah. Is and, it cool? And there's something in that drink. Just want to, you know, tell you beforehand <laughs> before you drink it. That I put something in it, so there's that. You know, no, it's scary. It's definitely scary. Yeah. From, it can be. From That's a, why I'm always telling people, like, especially for up and coming artists, like. If you don't know the person, Mm -hmm. like if you don't know the person and know that they're really trustworthy, like just roll with somebody. Even if you don't have an official manager yet, roll with somebody you trust that could just be there. Yeah. Yeah. Sess out the situation and make sure like it's on some work shit. You know what I mean? And like get into it and then you can come back by yourself if the vibe is cool. But for if you're just starting out, you don't need to be just like pulling, they up, said, pulling up at two a.m. Yeah, no, for real. <laughs> I can have free studio time. Yeah, like come by at two a.m. Nah, that's when we, that's cool. when I normally get my vibes going. And it really, honestly, <laughs> it it can be hard to navigate because it's also like not a normal industry where you might not get going till two a.m. Right, but you probably don't want to start out. Starting the session yeah, at you're gonna start 2 a.m. by bit. yourself. Not by yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> Why you make that face? <laughs> For you to end it with amen? Yeah. He, that's because, he's already rolling through all the pictures. Yeah. All you, gotta, the, you gotta ask for forgiveness all early. The amen. You yes, gotta Lord. ask for yes, forgiveness Lord. early. 2 a.m. Yeah, come on by. Oh, goodness. Come on through. Yeah, so, that, that 2 a.m. session stuff is, yeah, don't. It's a trick. Don't fall for that. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's like I used to go into the studio at like 4 p.m. And I might leave yeah. at 4 a.m. But I'm not starting at 2 a.m. At 2 a.m. That's crazy. Yeah, yeah. Look at my notes here. I got some more notes on you. <laughs> this guy in his notes. I love the notes. Victoria's Secret commercial. Oh, my gosh. I forgot about that because I love Victoria's Secret. Secret. That's where the ladies And that was be like one of the that was like one of the goals. Yeah. yeah, play made it into that. Wow. This song I did that I felt like that was perfect. I, I hope got, that happens again. I, I got love edited the out of that video. Secret. You were in the video? I was there. I did, I did. <gasps> <laughs> what you mean? Talk about it. Did you edit Jay out? Wait a second. Is that where this is going? <laughs> He been waiting all day. Oh my he been waiting hey, all. That was a nice lie, bro. He been waiting all day. <laughs> I didn't bring it up. <laughs> I didn't bring it up. But I, I was at the video shoot. Mm-hmm. I was there. I was 
there, you know. And it's, I, I'll probably send Jacob a picture of me and Guapo like, at the video at shoot. The, you, I'm at, not in the video. You though. didn't make the video. I wasn't in the video though. Wow. You know, Look, this is like selective memory. <laughs> Shit happens. You know, Guapo, you went to the Look, editing bay and good. took my man. Absolutely yeah. not. Took, you know what I mean? Absolutely yeah. not. Just yeah. move. Just just slide over just <laughs> a little bit. There we go. That's one. the shot we need. <laughs> that's, that's the shot we need right there. Oh my there. god! <laughs> and see, like, that's what if awesome. that was? What if you had a grudge on me no, forever and no, took it in a certain never. kind of way? And waited to the Army Money podcast yeah, right? to bring it up. I've been wanting to talk to you. <laughs> You know, about some shit that went down. Oh, listen. You know, that is great. What was shit that happens. about? No, 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 no. And, I and, don't know. and listen, and it wasn't like I was the interest in the video. He it was, was, you I were going to make a yeah, cameo. I was just making a cameo. I was making a cameo. And then the director. Keisha Cole kept him in the video. The <laughs> Keisha Cole like kept him in his video. I'm, I'm just saying. <laughs> Keisha Cole kept the video. Made me a full video. Maybe huh? it was going to make video. the plot line confusing. <laughs> <laughs> the director was like, this is too distracting. We can't have all of this. Get that nigga out of here. <laughs> oh my goodness. I don't remember who the director was. That's great. When I catch your ass. Oh, when I catch your ass. <laughs> Added me out of it. Because now I know it wasn't oh, Guapo like, yeah. who didn't want me in her video. It's her video, okay? Never that. Find me on the what's what's the shit? What's the cutting room floor? What they call it when they the chopping block? Yeah, yeah, chopping. I know, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, the cutting. God. Yeah, you in the yeah, cutting room. That's what it is. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Go back into your cutting room. Put me in the damn video. All right. Um, we need to do a new cut. <laughs> we need a new cut. <laughs> okay. Victoria's Secret. Let's Real run that up. back. So wait. So it it was you had a commercial. All right. Your your song. I was, think you, it you was one of commercial? those things. I think it might have been a Victoria's Secret commercial for play because I remember that song got into something with Victoria's Secret and it was like a sexy vibey song so I was like I was happy it was so many YouTube like dance stuff to that song I loved it because I was like I'm not gonna do that, but I love it. Was it was all? I'm not gonna do I, that, but I loved it because that was well, my next question. That was the so. Did you do one? You can do, you didn't it do the well. challenge. Huh? You didn't jump in the challenge. You didn't. No. No, I didn't. Um, but I, I think it ta- wasn't like that. I think it was Tank like, is motivating like you to jump in these challenges. Whole, you know what I mean? It was like very fitting for the song. Yeah, the, the, yeah. you gotta the, see the video. The videos that people were doing, and I thought it was great. So it was pole dancing. Yeah, that's what you said. Okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. Amen. Amen. <laughs> the Lord is calling for more of that in these last evil <laughs> days. Like nobody's mad when there's a, nobody's mad. And people and nobody's like upset. all kinds of choreography. I just thought it was dope. Yeah. I I love it when people take things. No, the dancers make and... records hits. They make they make hit records. Yeah, yeah they are sure. the true underground. Yeah, yeah, they're the true. If you underground make something yeah. for the dancers. Yeah, yeah, you got something. Yeah, I stay and then it's like the organic. I it, just, it is. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You can't even fake that too, because a lot of people try to try to I don't know in a sense use the dancers, mm. you know, to try and uh, build records up to yeah. try and build records yeah. up or recreate, you know, the lightning striking in the bottle. Like you, yeah, you you can't recreate the real magic. You know what I'm saying? When yeah. when when it, when a when a dancer connects at the right time with the right lyric and the right like, you know, you just you it's just and different. I lo- and I yeah. love that. Like for me, I like. I mean, right now I'm like working on stuff with different senses, and I'm gonna have like candles with different songs, and mm-hmm. it should come like with yeah. the. You know what I mean? Have a scent. It should have its own color. It should have its own vibe. And I love the mix media of it like a choreography that's like really just from someone being inspired to interpreting yeah. a song mm-hmm, mm-hmm, i mm-hmm. love that yeah. or like when something's in film and it really captures a moment i just like you know when people take the music to another level mm-hmm. with some other kind of medium yeah with that art there their art marrying yeah, your yeah, art yeah. But just, like how they see yeah it. but just, yeah the right connection, though. Yeah, you know, yeah. you know when it's the right. Yeah, connection. Yeah, yeah. You can you can feel it for sure. Better than you can see it. Yeah, um, it can transcend. You perform with Dave Chappelle. That's what I'm saying right here. 
Mm-hmm. That's crazy. He's a dear friend. Dear friend. Dave mm-hmm. Chappelle's a dear friend. Got mm-hmm. it. Okay. So. And Champagne. he was at that Troubadour show, probably. Or he was at one of them. I mean, and yeah. it was like one Dave of Chappelle those. Dave Chappelle just shows up. Yeah, 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 that's yeah. what, you know. Yeah, and the, it was like when he wasn't, yeah. Yeah. you know, he would come to the Bay I and do say he shows might've. all the time. You know what, now that you say it, I think he introduced you. Yeah. Wow. I didn't even, yeah, now it's clicking that you said that. I'm pretty sure he introduced mm-hmm. you at that show. That's crazy. And I didn't know he was going to do that. I thought he was just going to come. He would do a lot of shows in the Bay, but he was mm-hmm. like kind of wanting to be under the radar at that point. But was super supportive and introduced me. But I went out to Ohio and did a show like some years ago when he put on a blues festival. It was like Erica. That was like on his property people. or something too, right? Near his property. He okay. was like doing a whole festival some years back. And there's just been, you know, different things. Like he loves music. He loves so music. Much. Yeah, absolutely. You know what I mean? So yeah. he's like a big He loves talent. Of music. He loves like... Have you done the um, what is it that he does the the juke joint? Mm-hmm. And I did when he did it? summer <laughs> camp and stuff. Me and him went to what? Do you remember that you in did? New York? Oh, that was yeah. So yeah. it was Absolutely. like Absolutely. It was it was fun. It was right? literally we were at another event. Yeah. And someone damn near like tap tank on the shoulder. Like, hey, Dave Chappelle has something going. 15 minutes. Yeah, yeah. you don't want to It was it. just like and me and Tag are like, <laughs> we going, right? <laughs> yeah. We try to figure out how we going to get there. Yeah. Yeah. It was like this secret, we get there. You remember the whole thing? Absolutely. Absolutely. We get there and like they take your phone. Your phone up. They put your phone in these things. Yeah, little pouches. Yeah. The first time I, I've seen it. I snuck yeah. mine in because I'm good I with think, contraband. I think I snuck mine in too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, I, and, I, and I have a little phone on the side. Yeah. but And I just remember... It was it was the first event that I had been to where it was no phones. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, this shit is Since really fucking Since Everyone cool. had their Has phones phone. out at stuff. Right. Because right? mm-hmm. when we first started doing stuff, it wasn't like that. Right. But I'm like, this shit is really cool. Yeah. And people are having a fucking great time yeah. Yeah. talking to each other, For one. Sure. Yeah. And yep. paying attention. Yeah. The jam then the jam session broke out. Yeah, the jam session broke out. And they was jamming. Yeah. Dave was right. I think that was my first time ever meeting Dave. That was my first time ever meeting Oh, yeah, because you ended up super on stage. Cool, yeah. Super humble. Yeah. What did you sing? I don't know if I sang. Did you sing? I, you I ended think, up on stage somehow. Yeah, I was though. on stage. I, I, don't, I don't think I sang, though, because it, yeah. it was so much going on. It was yeah. so many people trying to get that microphone. Yeah. yeah. But I to, like, like the phone thing. It's, I mean, it's kind of a trip. Like, you're locking up my phone. You know right. what I mean? Like, it's right. like such a sense of security. But I think like the being present mm-hmm. absolutely is that was it's got to become a thing again. It was great. Yeah, it's got to become a thing. Sometimes again. it's like I'm performing and people are like just looking through their phone, watching me the whole time. Yeah, it's a little and weird. It's, it's a little weird. It takes you. It takes you out of it. It's you just know the what I mean? energy is just different. You know what the I mean? The energy is totally way different. different. Like, like I always liken it to the Scream tour. Like there were no tell phones at the Scream tour, mm. and you could tell, time. yeah, because yeah. when them when them kids walked out on that stage, when Bow Wow them, Marion them, Chris Brown them walked out on that stage, all you heard was deafening. It's like no scream. distraction, no, dis- no, they were nothing in it. They were locked in. Yeah, he's here. Yeah. I love him. Yeah. yeah. Ah. Yeah. It was immediate. It wasn't. Yeah. Like, oh no, no. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. Yes. It wasn't none of that. Yeah. I love those days. It wasn't look at me, looking look at, at the me. show. Yeah. Then you or flip it. Like then you this. flip it, look at yourself. You know what I mean? That's, that's, I'm in this hole. That's crazy. It's yeah, it's distracting. Yeah. It, it's it's no yeah. more about the yeah. artists no yeah. more. The artists don't like that, guys. The artists and don't plus, like that. And plus, <laughs> there's you're not if nobody's phones out, you're not worried about how you're looking in the background either like you could just have a good time just have yeah. a good time you know what i mean mm-hmm. just have a good time yeah yeah and no, I, I i always remember that party though or i don't even know what to call it it was a party it was yeah. a, a, a jam show session. it was a yeah. jam whatever it was that shit was really it was cool yeah. yeah it was really cool i've only been to one yeah um waiting for the next tap on the shoulder i'm so waiting too yeah because we've never been did we do something wrong 
No, I don't think we did anything did wrong. Did you steal some? Dave. No. <laughs> Chappelle. Hey, man. Y'all are ready. Uh, come you on. Gotta Y'all got to call him on our know, behalf. Yeah, call Dave. I'm going to tell Simba to call him. He loves Simba. Simba, call singing. Dave, man. Tell him. And you know who else used to do parties like that is Prince. Prince. I knew she was oh, going there. Yeah. Because of course, yeah. you know. Yeah, I mean, I've never been to a Prince party. I've never been to a Prince party. Have you been to a Prince party? No, I've okay. never been invited. But you were at the Prince party. He didn't want you to take your shirt off. I'm, he might. No, you know what? I'm not going to go there. No. Uh, you, you just, you just, I just think he invited. You got invited. You got invited. I didn't get invited. Did you sing too? You sang at the Prince party too? You know what? I sung when he had, um, you know when he was doing those 21, 31, is that what it was called? Oh, is that when he- tour. In Vegas, he had like a residency. I think that's when he- uh... When he uh, when he was renting Boo's house and he changed his address, oh, colored and he changed the color <laughs> to that number. Look, <laughs> yeah. Had the emblems, everything. You was at that house. <laughs> no, he changed his whole house. Cause Boo's is our homie. Yeah, Carlos Boo's is our homie. So he he told us the story before he told the public the story, which is Crazy. amazing. Yeah, he. <laughs> cause he was all about the branding, huh? Absolutely. Yes. yes. I'm going to turn your house. I'm going to change your address. Your address. Yeah. The whole thing. The whole thing. I'll put it back. Like who done. can do that? But he Prince. can. He can no, do yeah. anything. Yeah. We were just talking about how he was like selling albums with tickets to yes. his arena show. They stopped it, it because like of him. Stopped they stopped it because of him. Business. You I'm, know? The ticket I bought, I think it was the last concert I took yeah. my mom to before she passed, mm. was the Prince game. She was the... Biggest Prince fan. Yeah. The only light skinned man she loved ever mm. was Prince. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. I remember a CD came yep. along with, as soon as you walked in, yeah. you gave him your ticket. Yeah, and you were like, they gave what? you a CD. Arena tour. You didn't realize. Arena that tour. You, you didn't realize that you Several had paid an extra that was 10 bucks. Genius. You didn't realize you paid an extra 10 he bucks. He was yep. selling 20,000 yeah. CDs a, a night. night. Yeah. A night. Like, you love me, so just, you know. You don't even realize it. Just you know, you don't know what you don't thinking. There's an extra ten dollars in here. Nope. For this CD, made perfect. And, I think and he it was doing that with sense. newspapers. It in wasn't London even ten dollars though. Doing that show, like oh, he was doing it with newspapers. I think he was. <laughs> it's just like I, he was just was one of those. It was genius. People that could make things manifest. We got to get back to that. And he was also a touring artist. Absolutely. Yeah. So Absolutely. you're going to see him. You're going to see yeah. him. He's like, so if I just add an extra $10. Oh, for sure. Just like one of the $110 the is the ticket. Yeah. You don't even. I it didn't, it didn't matter. I was so going you to thought, see you regardless. just thought your seat came with right. a ticket. I mean, you thought your seat came with yeah. a CD. Right. Yeah. That's you what I you thought. You didn't think you paid for it. Yeah. Until I, until, until I was like reading up on it in like Billboard or something. And until like, Billboard yeah, was like, no, no, you can, no. Uh, this doesn't count. This don't count. What? How does that not count? I don't care if it don't count. Is a sale. It's so for sure. We gotta put we gotta put the C D back with the Yeah. With the ticket. Yeah. I mean yeah. he why not? And then they called it a bundle. A bundle. That's what they Then the, the, the bundle too. started. Then the bundle started. And then and the now they and now they, done away, the now they done, done away with the bundle. Now they done away with the bundle. They got mad at Travis Scott mm. when he did the bundle. Him and what's the name? Him and uh, what Nicki Minaj? So Travis I didn't even realize he did it he did his bundle something with Obviously, you know, the Kardashians and, mm -hmm. you know, he got the shoe drops and all the cool shit. And um, when he did his bundle, he beat somebody out. I forgot. I, I think it might have been Nikki. Yeah. He beat somebody out. And it was like, nah, nah, this ain't fair. We got to change the rules. We got to change the rules again. I think and then I, they got, I, and then I, they got I, rid of the bundle. I don't want to misspeak, but then they, yeah, they definitely got rid of, rid they of, got the, bundle rid of the bundle after that. My thing is that, look, if someone is popular. Mm-hmm. We should be able to use all of it. Whatever. Yeah. Yeah. It's not unfair to me. Why wouldn't you want to use all I of it? I may not be as popular as the next artist, but if they've figured out a way to yep. bundle these things. Mm -hmm. To make something else cool to and add their music audience. to it. Yeah. For yeah. the super fan. Yep. The yeah. super fans, you are so you should be able to get something more exclusive. Yeah. You should, you know what I mean? If you buying into because yeah. now you're truly buying into the artist. Cause we all know obviously the music itself. It's now just promo for everything else. Yeah. Yeah. It really is. It's just a yep. soundtrack. Mm -hmm. You got to make your own movie now. you damn right. And all these other things have to be the movie that's connected to that. Yeah. But the music is really just the soundtrack. You can get it for free in a way. Mm -hmm. 
You know what I mean? Because where those streaming numbers are, that's definitely fucking free. You're making yeah, that's way streaming itself. Thousands period. of a penny. You know what I mean? Like this shit is insane. That's why I got you know this mean? OnlyFans going, man. And this guy wants to go to OnlyFans. This guy. That's well, artists do stuff on OnlyFans. That's stuff. where them exclusive they give songs exclusives. is going to yeah, live. Yeah. It's for the exclusive You know what? Song. I might put my album on OnlyFans. I'm going to be working out to my exclusive songs. <laughs> oh, shit. You guys got to take it somewhere else. Uh-huh. You guys got to take it somewhere else. They want to see it. They want to see it. It's not me. It's not my it's choice. It's not my choice. It's just moving through me. It's, 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 it's moving through me. It's moving through me. <laughs> oh, she's giving him ammunition. It's the Lord. I can't. <laughs> I can't take all the credit. The Lord has nothing I'm just to do not with resisting. OnlyFans. I'm just not resisting. Give me the language, Guap. I'm not resisting what, what, what he's trying to do with me and my fans. <laughs> Only here. Only here. <laughs> <laughs> so what is Guap? What is what is Guap now? What is what is right now? What is right now? Yeah. Um well, I'm finally about to put out a new project, and okay. Okay. Yeah. thank you. Yeah. I didn't realize like, it had been so long. What do you do, like, so do like every five years? What's, yeah, your, what is, what's your thing? What is what's, the, what is, what's the number? Maybe. Why? Maybe. It maybe Why? has turned. It's not been on purpose. I think, I don't know. I like to marinate. I want to have something to write about. Mm-hmm. I want to have something to say. You live a little bit. I want to be inspired. Very shot ish That's what she does. Yeah, extremely. she makes us way. Just let them wait. Let them wait. <laughs> and it's going to be a lot of feeling, right? No, it is. Yeah. I know, when I know she it's going to be right when it. Yeah, yeah. But I, I do sometimes wish I worked faster. It's a goal. But I don't know. I mean, this listen, is how it's been so, listen, you're so here. far. So I'm, I'm here. Apparently, what you're doing and the way you're doing it is it working. It's working in some yeah. kind of way. Yeah. So I had a dream about this, too. You did? Yeah. I don't call it deja vu. I call it confirmation. Like okay. This is, huh. This okay, is, this tell is, me. This has happened. It's happening. Okay. Yeah. All and right. And then I told you I had a dream about it. And then I told I like you I had a dream that, about though. it. I like that, though. I like that when that happens. That's Because it feels like you're in the right you're, place at the right time, right? Yeah. yeah. So um, I started writing these songs like during the pandemic because I had nothing but time on my hands mm-hmm. and sitting still and no distraction. And it didn't happen right away. But after like a couple of months, it was like, oh, I get it. It's going to be a while. Yeah. Yeah. I don't have that many Zoom meetings, so <laughs> I should be doing something. <laughs> and, um, you know, like recording on my own, like reuse, like relearning how to use Pro Tools and Logic. Yeah, that's and how I was all. too. <laughs> yeah. uh, excuse me. I'm stuck. I can't do it. Ruben. Come on, man. You got to. He said, but, but bro, the COVID doesn't mean, come on over here, man. I'm, <laughs> you must come I'll on. stay by the microphone. You stay, you stay by the You computer. don't need a mask. We'll be fine. Yeah. <laughs> At some point, Ruby just said, bro, I can't do it. I can't. I can't do it. You I see what's going that. on? I'm not coming over. I said, Fuck. You probably had parties over there, too. You were no. like, I need the vibe. No, I wasn't. No, it was just me. It would literally be me and yeah. Ruben. After we did the second yeah. EP, he said, I'm done, Tank. I'm done with this. I'm, I'm, I'll be back oh, when it's so safe. Did two projects? I'm going back to the mountains. I'm going back to the mountains. I'll be, I'll be back when it's safe. He's showing up. You did two projects. Two EPs, yeah. Golly, it was okay. just, it was just, you know, piano and vocal. It was, it was super easy. You know. Wow, you know how that, I do. Is like that where you said, you're going? Is that where you're going? going right to the piano. Okay. Really? The okay, so it took right. me a little longer. Than it took you. <laughs> you know, um, but. It let me just like really have my guard down and just really think about what I want to say and mm-hmm. just really be in the moment and um, work with different musicians to like build songs up. I would sit with Errol Cooney, who I've been working with, guitar player, for years, and Bedrock would send me tracks yeah. and Mike Tiger and all these people. And it got to be a slow unrushed process that I was that I could feel like okay I'm done with this I'm at peace I feel like I got to say everything I, I, I want to like say I'd like to send you some tracks are you, you you're done please because you have the most beautiful chords I will say I was telling you last time mm-hmm. I saw you I was like that song's slow 
I didn't, you I got, didn't do that one. But you didn't? But it sounded, it like, sounded like it sounded like something I would do. Yeah. You guys can go lyrically all types of places. It can be yeah, raunchy. Yeah, it, can be, it can be everything. Yeah, but the thing is, like, the melodies are mm. so beautiful. Mm. And the choice of notes over the chords that it's just, like, it's beautiful and edgy, shall we say. That's a great In just the right way. Yeah. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. So, yeah. I love that. Please send me some stuff. Okay. Okay. I'm excited. I want the melodies, too. Yeah. So are um, you almost done with the project now? Yes, I'm done with this project. A name for it? Or are you going to wait to surprise colors. everybody? Colors. Mm-hmm, because it, cause I just want to get more into the sensory world. I'm like one of those synesthetic people. I don't know if you guys heard it. You know where I know you're... Exactly. I, don't, yeah. I don't even know what that word is. It's like where your I just learned something senses... New. I didn't know there was a name for it. Okay. It's like, you know, you're, you're, you're sound you bathing. Know. You're sound I'm, bathing. You're doing, I, I, I know love what's going sound on. Bathing. I know what's going on. He can brother. make anything sound good. It's like where your senses mix together. So when you hear music, you see it in a certain way. And it's like certain colors and certain. Oh, okay. And so I just want to express that more mm-hmm. with this album. So is it like colors or colors? Or what, you know, nigga, I thought you were there or something. Or, 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 or <laughs> or is... It's just colors. <laughs> <laughs> colors, ladies and gentlemen, coming soon. Color. <laughs> Dope. Well, listen, Guap. <clears throat> yeah. Guap. Oh, yeah. Get com- you're going to play a little song. Get comfortable. You know, yeah. I've been known to dabble. Yeah. Um, Use your talents, man. Use my talents, <laughs> man. I just don't want to just be all chest. I want to. <laughs> you know, you've, you've, you've been doing this music thing for quite some time. You know, yeah. I'm sure there are people who've inspired you. Man. And their gifts have helped magnificent your own thing. And so from there, I think you can probably give us a top five. Yeah. Your top five. <laughs> top five. Your top five. r and Or in these songs, yeah. Crumble, <laughs> stop. Crumble, pause. Don't fall. Ah ha 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 Um, Did you clap for yourself? Too? A little bit, a little bit, a little bit, a little bit. There was a void. I needed one more hand. <laughs> wow. Your Uh-oh. top five top R and B singers. Mm. Mm. I can't wait to hear this. I'm excited. Okay, my genres are going to be a little. Yeah, yeah. No, Do no, your no. thing. I, that's what I expect. That's what I expect. Okay. But there's always R and B in it. You gotta right? explain that. Okay, okay. It's okay. your world. So I would say Stevie Wonder. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. I would say Prince. Mm-hmm. I would say I'm gonna put D'Angelo in there. Why wouldn't you? Hell yeah. Why wouldn't you? Um and I'm gonna put Anita Baker and Babyface in there. Come Ooh. on. Come on. That sound like a tour. That sound like a tour, don't it? <laughs> so I go see it. <laughs> Me too. Me too. Ooh. I'm staying in the crowd, though. I ain't going backstage. You ain't going backstage? Uh, uh, too, I'm much heat. Crowd. Too, much heat. too much heat. Too much heat. I'm staying. I'm staying. That's a great top five. That is an amazing top five. 
All that, I mean, there's that, really so much more, but yeah, mm-hmm. all that fits you. Mm-hmm. Right okay. now, right now, that's the five top five R and B songs. Uh, um, I would say "Adore," Prince. Mm-hmm. Um, I would say "Joy Inside My Tears." Stevie Wonder. Wow. You going there. Um oh, yeah, she digging. I know. I like the I like no, the no, sad no. stuff. I love but it. I'm like, yeah. what would I never want to fast forward through? Mm-hmm. Um I would say Angel, Anita Baker. Oof. I would say mm-hmm. Right? So beautiful. <sighs> Every time. <sighs> um Let It Burn, Jasmine Sullivan. Mm. Mm. Um, what is that? Four? Four. Yeah. Ooh. Um, one more again, D'Angelo. Hmm. One more again. I was, I was a D'Angelo fanatic. Yeah. I had the cassettes. I was listening to D'Angelo every day, yeah. all day, yeah. every day. Just yeah. from a musician standpoint, like then we then from, we can right then we can get to his vocals. It would be like the longest his, intros, oh, but just, it was just, just like, like the what? setup. Because it's like it's it's like he was shedding, yeah. At the same time that he was making music, you know what I'm saying? He just it you was just, no rush. You just happened to get like like Untitled is probably one of the greatest R and B songs of, of all, all time. Yes. All time. right? Yes, and I agree. It was such a vibe and such a musical shed that there was the the album version is never making it on the radio. Let's just figure out how we just can cut this yeah. magical moment down yeah. into three and a half yeah. minutes. Yeah. And, and I think they were working like they were shedding like with uh was it Soul Quarians, you know, Quest Love and uh, Jamie yeah, Poyser yeah. and all yeah. that. I think they were in the studio at least a year. And, just and, that, and that one boy playing like Prince covers, playing Raphael, every that song Raphael they Sadiq. loved. Raphael Sadiq, such an amazing <sighs> producer. Every, every and time so Raphael like is a, somewhere this, in the vicinity, yeah, magic. shit get crazy. Yeah. Magic. Yeah. It's magic. Every time he's in the vicinity, mm-hmm. shit get crazy. Yeah. Yes. Like musically, I know we, we just jumped to some other. We getting back to to your yeah. Voltron. <laughs> no, no, no. Raphael Sadiq just has a way of making adding shit. the right thing. Oh, it might God. even just be a baseline. It just make it sweet. Yeah. Tony Tony songs. Are you kidding me? For sure. Top shelf. All of them. For sure. And even I think he was part of Cranes in the Sky mm-hmm. and like yeah, uh, he was. Um, some of my favorite Erica songs. He's sick. He's sick. Some of my favorite Bilal songs. Don't talk. Don't talk about that guy. Yeah, Bilal. I mean, don't talk Bilal about that is amazing. Guy. He, he, he's nuts. That boy can sing. Yeah, he really can. That boy can sing. He re- see because I would put sometimes in my top five. Really? Ooh, <laughs> that boy. Is That's a Ill. song I never want to fast forward. Yeah. you know what I mean. Yeah. It's just like. All right, let's make your Voltron. Okay. Let's get back to okay. you. Okay, okay, here we go. You're making an R&B Voltron. Okay. Super artists. You got to get the vocals from somebody, the performance style from somebody, the styling from somebody, and the passion of the artist, the heart of it. Who are you getting the vocal from? Wait, when you say styling. The we're getting to it. The drip. Are we getting to it? Okay. Mm-hmm. There we go. Okay. Who are you getting the vocal from to build your perfect artist? That one vocal. The vocal. Uh, I don't know if this is going to all match, but it doesn't matter. Mm. Okay. Maybe Jasmine Sullivan. I think her voice is so beautiful. She get on my nerves. No flaws in her voice. Yeah. Nothing. None. Yeah. She just she just get on my nerves. Everything right. Everything right. Just live. Don't matter. Yeah. No matter where she is. Behind the microphone. Studio live. I just, just yeah. effortlessly. Can't take her nowhere. And I think she's been that way since she was like a, a baby. She's been a that teenager. Yeah. Cause I remember but hearing she was slow about online. her through yeah. Jazzy Jeff when she was like 12, 13 wow. or something. Okay. And I, I hadn't met her back then, but he was like, this. No, it's special. Her think, voice is so I think amazing. Tease Williams played me 
Jasmine mm. Sullivan. I think she was 12. Yeah. Either 12. Yeah, like you said, like 12 or 13. Like with a woman's voice, right? I was like, what is this? I remember yeah. she sat on the side of my stage one time when I went there for in, tour. In Philly. And in I Philly. wanted her to come out and sing yeah. so yeah, bad. Yeah, yeah. She was like, I was like, please, for the love of God, <laughs> <laughs> just come out. Um, okay, you got Jasmine. That's, that's I mean, performance style. You can get that from. Performance style. How do I interpret that? On stage. How they, you know, what they do on stage. Who would you love to go uh, see live or, or that you've seen live that you that just, like, like the, amazing? Um, okay, performance swag. Mm -hmm. I'll say Rihanna. Mm hmm. Cause she ate. She get it off. She, she ate it off. Super Bowl. Yeah. Right. With a baby. And it just comes she made the off. Super Bowl seem very easy. Very yeah. Right? It comes uh, yeah, off I'm very here. effortless. I mean, Y'all yeah. love it. <laughs> swag. You yeah. know, no, like she was cooking. She's cooking. I loved it. I get it. I love her energy live. Styling. The drip of the artist. Oh, see, maybe I do you switch. Do, 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 <laughs> yeah. Go do your thing. Do your okay. Thing. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I want to put her there. You want to put her in the styling space? The, oh, the performance. The, I'm gonna have to come back to that one. I would say, ooh, because I don't want to. Do, can I come back to the performance one? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Sure. Well. Okay. So in the drip, you want to go Rihanna? Yeah. Nice. Okay. Well, now let's go back to the performer. No, I want to go to the other you one. Go to other <laughs> you want to go to She's pointing at my finger. Yeah. <laughs> I'm trying no, to keep track. Go to your index finger. That's where I want to. Go to your thumb. That's where I want to. Go to your thumb. That's where I want to be. <laughs> I'm, trying to, I'm trying to keep up. Okay. And then I need to come back. You're great. The heart of the artist. The passion of the artist. Prince. Mm. Mm. Can't argue that. Yeah. Nope. Just arguing that. But see, maybe he's performance. Maybe he's that's both. Probably he's, one of, he's, he's all, maybe yeah, he could be he's both. both. Okay, so which one? Let's go back to the performer. Mm -hmm. No, I would put him, I would say, for the heart. Okay. Like the passion, mm -hmm. the approach, like just ultimate life. Mm -hmm. And maybe... I would put Sade in there mm. in one of those. At the performance? But see, I like the passion of Prince's performance, but I like some of her delivery. So it's like a a Prince Sade performer with Prince Passion? Or yes. Prince and Sade yes. Passion? With Rihanna's clothes? Hmm? With Rihanna's clothes on. With Rihanna's and clothes it, on. And, and Jasmine, Jasmine Sullivan's, and Jasmine Sullivan's voice. I'm rolling. Why I'm not? rolling. Why not? Wouldn't that be amazing? It'd be shit. It would be a Voltron. <laughs> and then if I could write songs like Babyface. <laughs> you know what? Just add to it. Man. <laughs> that would be what? Some a billion dollars worth of business. <laughs> For sure. Okay. What, what, else, what else you got over here on your me... piano? <laughs> we got we got one very special. Segment before we let you up out of here. Okay. Don't dance too fast because cool. you might, you know, mm. don't you might get nervous. We don't want you to get nervous. Ooh, pretty notes. I ain't saying no names. I ain't saying no names. I ain't saying no names. I ain't saying no name. Who you was? Who you with? What y'all did? Don't say shit. I ain't saying no name. show and have you do the jingle <laughs> he oh, he's comes up with this stuff oh, he's definitely like, the jingle man he's I'm definitely jingle the jingle man, man. I'm the jingle man so Jay, mm. very important part of the show mm -hmm. yes segment mm -hmm. yes it's called I ain't saying no name none oh yeah yeah, yeah. you know you might need another water yeah. cause that, okay. that I one, might need a new water you might be running out new water yeah 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 yeah, yeah. Uh, cause this this segment is about the travels the journey yeah of Guapale and some shit you might have seen, some shit you might have experienced. Mm -hmm. You tell us a story, funny or fucked up, or funny and fucked up, mm -hmm. 
The only rule is you can't say no names. Okay. No. Mm-hmm. Will you guys tell me yours later? <laughs> <laughs> the people like, on the net. <laughs> I feel like this is like, if I show you guys my diary. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Do I get to see I you? can't be by myself. <laughs> I, got, I got some funny ass stories. <clears throat> I definitely have uh, some funny ass stories. But, um, so, so? When you're ready, let us know. Okay. You got to introduce you. You need to think about oh, it for a minute? You need, you need to think about it for a minute? You need to think about it for a minute? I think I got one. Okay, okay. So right now, mm-hmm. we are going into Kawapale, yeah. all the way from the Bay. Mm-hmm. I ain't saying no names. The pressure is on. Yeah. The pressure is on. Um, there was, I would say this is like a, um, early on, maybe this is like, Early, early 2000s. And I was probably just starting a tour. And um, I got invited to do a show in Selma, Alabama. Mm -hmm. For Bloody Sunday, it was like a... They redo the march across the the bridge, right? Uh Like community festival. Mm -hmm. And it was probably, you know, balling on a budget. We probably had like a red eye, had to get ready like at the spot because Mm. it was like an early show and all of this stuff. And I just remember getting ready. I remember it was hella hot and it was like a good size crowd out there, you know, but people were hot. And um, we might have been running like we weren't running behind schedule, but the thing was running a little bit behind schedule. And so I remember the organizer came back and they were like, um, is it cool? Like if you're not in too much of a rush, we might have to switch things around a little bit. Um, there's this brother that has to uh, catch a flight. And so, you know, we might, is it okay if he goes on before you and blah, 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 blah. And I was just like, okay, you know, like, of course I, I get, I'll i roll with it. And sometimes it can be nice. You're moving up in the, um, in the, in the order. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So it's kind of like, even though I was, I was ready to go, but Cause it's maybe because it's, it's hot, but maybe, you know, this is a better look. And they didn't tell me um, who the person was. And um, then said artist, you know, gets announced and it was a really warm reception. You know, it's mainly women in the audience and um this artist is killing it proceeds to take off their shirt all greased up work the crowd get into the audience i'm telling you it was like the show was coming to an ending and i was like what the what type of shit is you know what i mean like (laughs) what are we about to do and we're just watching this amazing artist. Yeah. And then I had to go on after that. You know what I mean? And I just felt like I couldn't rush to closer soon enough. You know what I mean? I felt <laughs> like, like, I gotta kill this. I gotta, cause you don't want the energy to go down. Right, right, right. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, and like, you know what I mean? When I met you later, I, I thought you looked kind of familiar. I thought you looked kind of familiar. <laughs> you asshole. <laughs> but no. I mean, I... <laughs> it makes it great because when you were saying it, and you're like, like, I've been out that, there. <laughs> that sounds I've like me. I, I've been there before. This is an amazing. <laughs> I ain't saying say your name. <laughs> 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 Shit. You know, this brother, uh, if you don't mind, 
Oh um, he's just gonna go before you because he needs to catch a flight. Oh and we're like, God. okay. Oh, this is great. What? As you started telling the story, I'm like, that sounds familiar. Killing it, yes. Shirt off. No, yes. even before you got uh, there, I was like, Selma. I was like, I've been there, and I, I, I just, I wanted to act. I wanted to remember that we were on the show because we've been on so many shows together. I <laughs> well, no, you were gone hey, by man. the time I got on stage, so you wouldn't have remembered my part. <sighs> oh man, that's awesome. Oh yeah, it was very memorable. It was, it was very memorable. <laughs> I was like, I need the details when they switch up these lineups next time. Make sure it's not a nigga oh who's going to take his shirt off. Okay. <laughs> All oiled up in the sun. It was definitely oiled up in the sun. Walking oh, through the crowd. I'm he sure was like the, serenading the everybody in individually. Oh, my God. It he was, was so serenading hot. everybody individually. Yeah, was, <laughs> you could touch is this. Cra- yeah. You can touch this. Oh, this is great. That is gr- that yes. is a great. It might be the greatest of all times. Yes, I think about that every time that I is, see it. That is. <laughs> so this has been. You never I, told me. You never told me that. Wapalays, I ain't saying your name. <laughs> <laughs> As I tell you the story to you, it sounds familiar. I just started crying because I was like, I know where this is going now. <laughs> I'd had to go. I had to, I had to go. Nah, it was, it was a play. good show though. It was a good show. Oh. You want to thank her for let, let you thank you for let yeah not miss your flight not miss my flight you were awesome <laughs> you were awesome for that you were awesome even thank though it was it was painful this is at great. the time we'll do another show and yeah. Just, yeah yeah but I was like man okay be ready put your game face on get out there and do not disappoint after this man just left the stage like with they were kind of just like okay. But you knew this was coming. It's how it goes. You, you I didn't know. <laughs> He's got it. But that's also part of being a professional. Yeah. yeah. In this business. Yeah. Those type of things happen all the all time. All the time. Yeah. All and you were just it, gracious enough, but sometimes artists are just like, no. And nah, like, no well, chance. No. Jaheem said no. You said Jaheem said no. Jaheem said no. See, because they probably said your name. No, after I performed, I got back to the spot. I was like, Man, you supposed to be on stage right now. No, you can have a champ. That's all you, baby. I was like, what? <laughs> it's your turn. It's your turn. I heard that. He said, no, I ain't, I ain't on that tonight. I, I ain't on that tonight. I said, all right, okay. But see, you're right. It is, it's it's such a roller coaster mm-hmm. in this industry. And yeah. it's like, you can't burn bridges. You can't get too comfortable Mm -hmm. being treated a certain way or Mm. even in humbling situations, you might have the next day or the next moment be this like amazing moment or you never know who's going to be there. That's going to, you know, it's never that you touch. You just never know. And you got to just rock with it and try and have the best attitude possible. Mm-hmm. Because it's like the the circles come back around, yeah, right? Mm-hmm. If you're lucky to be in it long enough. Yeah, yeah. Great Guapale. I remember awesome. we go back too. No, I don't have no crazy story though. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, get him, get his ass. No, I, ain't that shit. I don't got no Selma moment. I don't have no Selma moment. I actually got kicked out of the video. Okay, that's uh, true. That's true. But that's you would true. make all the dopest remixes, right? I was known for stealing people's records. But that was But I like, wasn't making money off of them. But you know what? But I was you like were still Quist before building, Jack Quist. Jack Quist before Jack But you were still building your brand. For me, so I was- So it's like you're making money- I was having Doing fun. shows yeah. because we're all loving yeah. music. Yeah. You was know like, what I mean? But ultimately, the funny thing is, I didn't do a lot of shows. Mm. There's that so too. I really wasn't making- I You are just getting played on the radio. I was getting paid, but but I wasn't. I also wasn't um, submitting the songs as my record, so I never got in the way of anybody else's publishing. Yeah, yeah. So for those songs, which it just wasn't, it wasn't my thing. You know, yeah. I was purely doing it to have fun and and like, oh, this would sound dope more so than. Oh, I'm gonna use this record to try to become big off of somebody's record. Or I was just like, no. But you were doing, and that's like kind of how we came up. Too. Yeah, it's kind of yeah. just like had a rock doing our party versions. as a doing vocalist. our versions because mm-hmm. right. it's like a bunch of rappers. Yep, basically, mm-hmm. and it's like, how can you 
keep the vibe high, but do right. your version, you know, like Dom Sprung and all that. You know what I yeah, mean? Yeah. All of those. And like, I was just doing this show, um, me and Dougie Fresh were on it the other day, and he was afterwards just talking about like the importance of rocking a crowd. He was like, whether it's your music or a cover or whatever, it's about like when we do live shows, it's about the energy of the crowd. Right. You know what I mean? And lifting that up more than us trying to, be you know, a, do a, whatever. Yeah. So, like, we loved all those songs. You know, I was just trying to have a good time, man. Just you were having a good time. Trying not to get sued and shit. You were have a good I time. feel you. <laughs> I feel you. I feel you. <laughs> he's back now. Now he's going to put out his own songs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, you know, and somebody can steal my records. About damn and I'm time. fine with it. Right. I'm not sending nobody a cease and desist. Have fun. Rock out. Man. Have fun. I feel Rock you. out. Yeah. Keep the music time. on. Yeah. Keep the energy going. Yeah. The more the better. Yeah. 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 This shit going to yeah. live on one yep. way or another. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Or you hope that it does. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, Guapale, um, thank you. Thank yeah. you. Thank yeah. you for yeah. having me. Oh, absolutely. I honestly, like, yeah. I love your guys' show. I, like, I love you guys individually and just what you've done in the different ways. And I remember, like, even you doing I Can't Make You Love Me, you know what Mm -hmm. I mean? And putting your own twist on that. And Mm -hmm. I remember you hosting some stuff some years ago. And I was like, he has a knack for this. I hope he does more of it, you know? And I just love seeing you transition in all the different ways that you have. And then, like, you're putting out music again, too. It's just like, I appreciate the the evolution. It's time. Yeah. 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 Evolution. Yeah. Yeah. I like that word. Yeah. I'm not retiring. I'm evolving. <laughs> There's that. Look, well, we appreciate you. Your 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 family. You. you are always welcome. Thank you. You know what I'm saying? We are we are at your disposal. Whatever you need, I'm, I'll be sending you tracks for colors. Mm. All right. I'm very excited about that. Where I get to just be creative. Yes. You know what I'm saying? And have some fun with my sounds and paint and use yeah. all of my colors. That's yes. gonna be that's gonna be dope. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I'm Tank. I'm Jay Valentine. And this has been the R&B Money Podcast, the authority on all things R&B, where the vibe has been existential. Yeah. It has been heavenly. Yeah. Um, it is. We have a goddess amongst <laughs> us. A goddess amongst us. Yes. And we have been so blessed to be here today with her. Yeah. Guapale on now the R&B Money Podcast. <laughs> Get your offer. Get your offer. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, guys. <laughs> Ooh, yeah. R&B Money.